The journey of your life will be a journey of triumph. Amen. Whatever will come against you, you will triumph over it. Amen. John 16, 38, the Amplified Version. I read. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world, you will have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. Can you imagine? You will have sufferings, you will have discouragement, you will have all of this, you will have tribulations, you will have distress. But in the midst of all of that, be filled with joy. Hmm. Why? I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory is ready. Someone turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, my victory is sure in Christ. My victory is sure in Christ. I don't know what you are dealing with. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what the situ situation is with you. But I'm declaring over you that in Christ Jesus, your victory is settled. Yeah. These are the words of Jesus. He said, in the world where you live in, you are going to have peace in the midst of tribulations, in the midst of sufferings, in the midst of challenges, in the midst of distress happenings, in the midst of your sufferings. I don't know whether you have ever seen anyone whom you know is going through a lot of things, a lot of things are not working, yet the person is so at peace, the person is filled with joy. That can only happen when you know God. That can only happen when you are in the will of God. That can only happen when you have Christ in you. The natural response, the usual way that we respond to things that we face every day in life is to worry, is to be afraid, is to be tense, is to be agitated. But Jesus said, in this world, I'm not guaranteeing you that there will be no trouble, there will be no challenges, there will be no distress, there will be no suffering. But in the midst of it all, I will give you my peace. Yeah. And then you should be filled with joy. Amen. You know why? Because your victory has been settled by me. Yeah. Someone, if you don't mind, close your eyes and imagine whatever you are going through right now. And as you imagine it, I want to declare this as the end result. Victory will be your end result. Yeah. Psalm 34, verse number 19, New Living Translation. It says, The righteous person faces how many trouble? Oh, I know most of you are writing. Faces how many trouble? But what is the end? But the Lord comes to rescue. The Lord comes to the rescue each time. In other words, the righteous man may go through a lot of challenges, a lot of issues. You know, I've had people say things like this to me. Pastor, I don't know who I'm going through all of this. I don't know why this is happening to me. I will tell you why. Because you live in this world. Yeah. In this world, Jesus said there will be tribulation, there will be distress, there will be sufferings, there will be persecution, there will be false accusation, there will be disappointment. But I have given you my peace. In the midst of it all, have joy. Why should I have joy in the midst of sufferings? The child has not come, the marriage has not happened yet. Because Jesus said, I have taken care of your victory. Amen. Can I tell you, there is only one person that can't lie, God. What he says he will do, he will do. What he has done, he will say. God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that will change his mind. So if he said, in the midst of all of this, the end result is victory. All you need to do is to have peace and be filled with joy. Know that your victory is settled. Amen. Can you say good amen? amen? What therefore is triumphant living? Now, triumphant living here has a compound definition, so we're going to be looking at three definitions of triumphant living. One, a life of victory over all the troubles of life with the help of God. Turn to your neighbor. One thing that God has not guaranteed any one of us, tell your neighbor that. I know you are, not, you, did it, you are not ready because you are writing. It's even your note you are telling one thing. God has not guaranteed. But let me allow you to write. One thing that is not a guarantee. Please listen to this this morning. Because this will save you from stress. This will save you from headache. 
This will save you from hypertension. Is that God has not guaranteed that as long as you are in this world, there will be no trouble. God has not said as long as you are in this world, challenges would come. God has not said that you will not be betrayed. God has not said that they will lie against you. God has not said they will hate you. If my sister called me on Wednesday, she was so agitated. Pastor, look at what is happening. I said, listen to this. Anytime you are on your way to Cana, anytime you are on your way to the promised land, there are giants that will be on the way. And some of these giants are going to come in different shades. They are going to come in different forms. Sometimes, you know, a woman was trying to talk to me after the first service. Pastor, in my office, a lot is going on. My office has become hellfire. Amen. And I said to her, don't go to hellfire, go to heaven. Sometimes in life, it seems like we are in hell. But Jesus is saying, in the midst of that, be peaceful. Then be filled with what? With joy. You know, I, I, I don't know, but I, I'm surprised that some believers are really upset when challenges come. It's almost like a woman surprised that she's pregnant and that she's having labor pains. What do you expect? The reality of life is as long as we're in this world. Let me tell you, only one place where there, is no, where there are no persecutions or betrayers or backbiting and all of that is in heaven. Someone said, it's only in the grave that people don't have challenges. And I said, well, graveyards in this part of the world, they still have challenges. Because when someone dies, they can push your body aside and say, so... I won't want to agree that in the graveyard there are no challenges. They have challenges there. But I think the only place where you will have challenge is where? It's in heaven. Look at me. I'm not expecting to say a method. As long as you live in this world, there will be a challenge. Your husband loves you so much. Your husband cares for you. Your husband will not allow anything to happen to you but the elder sister. Are you still there? Come. Are you still there? You married, you have children, your husband bought you a car, opened a business for you. You came to church as a pastor, members, join me, rejoice. God has done it. All of us shout there. Some people so it to tap into your grace. But you have one neighbor in your shop who will not allow you to have rest. These troubles are real. By the means of it all, your victory is guaranteed. Yeah. And the men should be strong. Yeah. I had the opportunity to speak in a business forum and I said, chicken-hearted people don't do business. Because someday it will seem like I'm quitting. Someday it will seem like he's not even in ministry. At times you come to church and you feel like, what is happening here? Do I still have anointing? But you will hear within you, God will say, it's not my church. It's not your church, rather, it's my church. Just do what I say. I will take care of my church. Lift up your two hands. May you experience victory on every side in Jesus' name. Amen. So, triumphant living is a life of victory over how many of oh, the troubles of life with the help of God. So, there are troubles in this world. There are issues in this world. There are challenges in this world. But in Christ Jesus, he has given us total victory. Can you say Amen. I read this many years ago. If you are still here, say amen. Amen. Isaiah 43, 1 to 3. And I'm going to tell you what I questioned God about when it comes to this scripture. Let's read it first. One to go. New Living Translation, Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. It said, but now, oh what? Come on, read with me. Listen to the Lord who created you. Oh Israel, the one who formed you, says what? Do not be afraid. Repeat that. Repeat that, that word. Do not be For what? For I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Is that good news? Yes, sir. God said you are what? You are mine. That seems like, oh, thank God. But look at what he now said in verse number two. Want to go? Verse number two. Read it with me loud and clear. Stop there. Now, the question I ask, why will I go through it? Stop me from going through it. If Jesus has not gone through the cross, there will be no salvation. If Peter, uh, is, uh, Joseph had not gone through the prison and all the experiences, his dream will not come to pass. Turn to your neighbor. They may not like it, but tell them confidently because I'm asking you to tell them. Say, you must go through some things. 
Left and right, tell them. You must go through something. No, some of you are saying, my girl, through something. Say it very well. Say, you must go through something. You must go through But tell your neighbor, the going through, the going through is, to you, is to take you to the place, to the place of, your dream. of your dream. Can you say amen? Yeah. How many of you were planning your marriage ceremony? First, you were engaged. You are now dating. Then the marriage date was feast. And you fed on top of the world. Am I right? Yes, sir. Talk to me. Am I right? Yes, sir. You fed something great is about to happen. You printed cards. You told everybody. You went to market. God, what they call it? Ashebi? Is that Ashebi? Yes, sir. Which, which language is that? Ashebi, I don't know. You got the Ashebi, you gave everybody. People said I congratulate you. Congratulations, congratulations. Then you went to a shop, you bought a wedding gown, they gave you the first one, you did like this, it was not fitting, they gave you another one. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. They gave you all the visa things, and then you went to the market, you got, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the wedding ring, you know, you didn't like that one, you went to people who produce this, whatever, and they gave you the goldy one. Is that not true? And then you did a pre-photo section, pre-wedding section. Your guy carried you, roll like this, roll like this, roll like this, roll like this. And they were busy snapping you. And you put it on Facebook. Then you, you went to designers, they gave you t-shirt, queen and king. You showed the back, the date, all of you. The wedding day came. They brought you with limousine. Oh, the dream of your life. Are you still there? You came, I do, 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 I do. Everything I do, I do. No, 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 you say you will not do. Are you following? And the wedding was over. Are you still with me? Yes. Three months after the wedding ceremony, you look like this. You look like this. Am I dreaming? Isaac, you are like this. Isaac says, Susan, you are like this. You know what I'm telling you that story? Sometimes, our experiences are not what we expect. But our experiences are allowed by God. Most probably as a way of preparing you for a ministry. So that you become that man, that woman, whom tomorrow, others who are going through what you went through, will come to you when they hear you, they will find comfort. They will find strength. We go through things that makes us cry. But after a while, those same situations that made us cry becomes a reason why we will shine. Lift up your two hands. You are about to become a messenger of hope to the hopeless. I asked the Lord more than 20 years ago, and I said, Lord, a man of God preached from this place when you go through. I said, Lord, why? Why? Why did God just pick the Israelites from where? From Egypt. And just carry them, whoo, land them in Egypt, bizarre. Everything will be over. But if that had happened, are you still here? You wouldn't know. And trust God when difficulties come up. Do you know why the first Adam failed? The first Adam was not conceived. He was made. Just made it as a man. Everything given to him. The second Adam had to come and go through the natural process of being conceived. He grew up playing with other children. And he learned how to relate with this world and others. The first Adam, no, just apple, bam. And that's how he lost everything, bam. Because there was never any experience that would prepare him for what God entrusted to him. Have you seen people who inherited things they never labored for? Only very few can take care of it. Am I communicating? Going through is like a gold excavated in its raw state. You can't go to market and buy it. It has to go through a refining process. Tell your neighbor, whatever you are going through now, will not destroy you. You will come out of it a better person, a glorious person. But tell the person, please don't forget this. When you go through the fire, God is there with you. When you go through the water, God is there with you. You will come out of it with a testimony. If you believe what you said to that person, say amen.
When you go to the deep waters, what does deep waters mean? Something that is almost swallowing you up. Something that is almost making you to say, God, where are you? He said, those waters will not swallow you. I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulties, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flame of your boss, oppressive boss, will not consume you. Verse 3. Hear what the Lord is saying. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Serbia in your place. In other words, we cause others to go down for you to go up. Say that amen like you are the only one in the service. What is triumphant living? Becoming all that God has ordained against all earth by divine intervention. You and I are becoming all that God has ordained against all the troubles, all the challenges, all the trials, all the ups and downs, pandemic or no pandemic, recession or no recession. I'm glad to let you know that by God's divine intervention, you will become all that God has ordained for your life. In Luke 19, verse number 15, the Bible said a man had an invitation to come and be crowned a king. His subject said he can never become a king. They said it will never happen. The Bible said they sent a delegation after him to walk against him. Lift up your right hand. I think I'm preaching to the right people. And someone who is part of this meeting, this service is for you. Whoever is on assignment to walk against you, God will use them to work for your good. Yeah. Whatever is on assignment to work against your children, your ministry, your business interests, your career, your academics, God will turn it around and use it for your good. Yeah. Like the brothers of Joseph said, his dream will never come to pass. But that same evil intended against Joseph, God turned it around and used it to work for the fulfillment of the dream of Joseph. That will be your testimony. Amen. But look at Luke 19 verse number 15. Against all earth, against all the things they did against this man, he was made a king. Lift up your right hand. And please, I need you to shout an amen. I don't care you know, whether your voice is going to crack or not. Listen to me. That which they said you will not become, you will become it. That which they said your children will not become, your children will become it. That which they said your family will not become, your family will become it. That which they said your daughter will not experience, your daughter will experience it. That which he said that your husband will not be, your husband will become it. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servant to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. What we're taking from there is that in spite of all they tried doing against him, he was made a king. Very quickly this morning, I want to show you from the pages of the Bible, the word of God, how you can experience triumph in the midst of trials, temptations, Oppositions and what have you. There is God's wisdom for triumphant living. Many believers are trapped, not because God failed, but because they are engaging the warfare of life, the battle of life, with their human weapons. You are trying to fight a spiritual matter with a kind of approach. Listen to me, dearly beloved brothers and sisters. In the world we live in, please listen, listen, in the world we live in, there are those who are lovers of darkness instead of light. Is that true? Yes, sir. Uh-oh. You know where they are? Can I tell you where they are? They are very far off. No. I was in a place yesterday where somebody came and was shouting. Shouting. I said, my wife, where they shouting. <laughs> and I stepped out. If I the first people that went to see the person, the person was still shouting. When I stepped out, the person calmed down like ice block. You know why? There are people you can't threaten. Lift up your two hands. Everyone will hear of your promotion. Can I pray this for someone? I'm sure the person is not in this service. Maybe the person is online. Those who said they will not see you as said, in their means, in their present, God will lift you. In their present, God will cause you to excel. 
As a matter of fact, I'm praying for someone here. They pray, they say you cannot go, you will go. Amen. The high they say you cannot get, though you will go far beyond that high. Amen. What they say you can accomplish is already too late. You are too old. You are not good enough. I'm telling you, the grace of God will speak for you. Amen. If I let me pray this way, the next time that those mockers of yours will see you, they will know that something has changed for you. Amen. Sometimes we are busy quarreling. You know, this one, I don't like what this one is doing. Relax. You can be asleep and God is fighting for you. You know, I've had, you know, experiences. Pastor, what do we do? I said, relax. This church is not my church. Pastor, don't. Relax. Just be sensitive to God. So, what is God's wisdom for triumphant living? One. Be mindful of the presence of your shepherd, Jesus Christ, always. He doesn't matter what you are going through. He said, in this world, I have given you my peace. You will have tribulation. You will have distress. You will go through an experience that is not palatable, that is not pleasant. But be filled with joy. Why should someone be filled with joy when there are hardship, when there are things that are not going right? Be mindful of the fact that you have the one who promised never to leave you or forsake you. Once you are mindful of the presence of Jesus, you know that you belong to Jesus. You know that there's a Lord of your life. You know that when you sleep, he neither sleep nor slumber. You are already Applying the wisdom of God for victory. Hear what Jesus said. These are the words of Jesus. Luke 10 verse number 3. He said, go. Who said that? Jesus. Talk to me. Who said that? Jesus. He said, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. That is a suicide mission. But listen, go. I'm asking you to go. You are going to go and you will be like a lamb among wolves. Now, the strength of a lamp and wolves cannot be compared. Wolves will devour a lamp instantly. But I am going to prove to you that because I am your shepherd, you will go through the midst of these ravarious and deadly wolves and they can't touch you. Can you shout, thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus! Pastor, there are wolves everywhere. There are this. Relax. Jesus said, Go. Don't hide. Go. As you go, I am with you always. Amen. Even unto the ends of the earth. Are you still with me? Is that not what he said? When you go to the waters, what will happen? When you go to the fire, it will not consume you. You know, many of us are too mindful of our enemies. That's why we can't sleep. That's why we are looking dried. Wolves are real. But Jesus said, I'm your shepherd. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There are too many believers whose minds have not been transformed. So all you see every day is enemy. There are wolves. There are wolves. There are wolves. The wolves are there. The wolves might even be in the family. The wolves might even be in your workplace. Maybe this may annoy you. The wolves might even be in church. But in the midst of those wolves, Jesus said, I am with you. Shout thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In John 10, verse 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. You want to walk a life of victory? Don't let hypertension kill you. You know, Pastor, well, relax. There are wolves, but I am the good shepherd. Can you shout thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. You know what some of you are quiet? It's too simple. Uh, Pastor, not be as they talk about. Not as they talk about you. Wolves. I'm not going to go. That's why you are not making progress. That's why you are, you are living in fear. That's why you can't say. I told my two biological children, I said, the day God gave you to me, gave you people to me as children, that is the day the battle line was drawn between you and darkness. If you smile too much, they say you smile too much. If you don't smile, they say you don't smile. If you look skinny, they say you are dying. If you look fat, they say they are offering. Are you still there? Are you still with me? So I said, I'm preparing you people ahead because there are wolves. And all that wolves does is to attack, to devour, is to tear to pieces. 
But you know what? Be mindful of one thing. Are you still there? Yes, sir. Child of God, there was a time we were bothered about criticism of people. Talk anyhow. If they don't talk about you, you mean nothing. Yes, sir. That people talk about you means that you watch something. Yes, sir. Am I talking to the right people? Yes, Include some of you looking at me now. You still here? Yes, sir. Come on. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. If they don't talk about you, if I, let me quickly, and even when you have died, they will still talk. Why don't you live your life? Someone shout that we go. That's too cold. Pastor, it's not the way. Eh, that's how they kill so so person. That's how they kill so so person. What you prepare for is what you expect. As for me, I have my shepherd. Jesus is my shepherd. When I go through the valley of the shadow of what? Of death, I will fear no evil. There are many believers living fearfully, fearfully, fearfully. All they hear is a one witch, one woman. Shout up your mouth. Greater is he. That he that what? Can you shout a good amen? God's wisdom for triumphant living. Two, obedience to God's voice or to the word of God and leading of the shepherd. Obedience to God's voice and the leading of the shepherd. Jesus speaking in John 10, 4 to 5, he said, when he goes out, all his own, okay, when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. As long as you follow Jesus, you will go through the valley of the shadow of death. You will come out of it victoriously. Yeah. I love those who said a good amen. amen. As long as you have Jesus on your side, as long as Jesus is your shepherd as his sheep, fear nothing. The wolves will back, the wolves will threaten, the wolves will attack, but your victory is sure. Amen. Verse number five. He said, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him. Because they do not recognize a stranger voice. Let me tell you what this means. Your victory is in knowing what God's will is, staying in God's will. I remember in 2013 when I lost my dad, my biological father, and we're going towards the preparations for the burial, and we had to see a lot of family members, and most of them were not saved, most of them were very idolatry. And now when we visit each of them, some of them have not even seen them up until that time. And some of them, you could see some anger in there that they have not seen us. They have not been seeing us as if we are supposed to be seen every day. And then when we go there, they will tell us some things that were against our faith. And I thank God for my elder brother. Each time they come up with this, what we must do, my elder brother will say, excuse me, sirs, we are believers in Jesus Christ. We don't do such. They will say, hey, hey. My brother will say, we are sorry. Our faith will not allow us to do so. And do you know what? When the burial day proper came, somebody ran to us. We were in a house, a guest house given to us. And they said that some persons have threatened that they were going to cause rain to fall and the occasion will be scattered. And they said there was a burial like this that was done two months ago. That is how this same person threatened them. And when the barrier started, listen to what happened. They say wind came. Can you please fly like aeroplane on the air? And they came to our hotel room. And my, myself, my dad, we just smiled. If rain falls, it's because the farmers need rain. If rain falls, who does who don't have umbrella, rain will beat them and then it will not be dissolved. We didn't bother. They said we should take drink and money and give to the man. We? We cannot do that. Let them cause rain if they have the power. If rain falls, we don't. But we know one thing greater is He. That is on our side. You know what happened? The burial day came proper. The venue was filled up. You know what happened? People said rain fell all around that community. But a single rain. How many of you were in that burial? Did they come down? You know why? Can I say this to you? As long as you hear the voice of your shepherd and you follow him, he will fight with you. He will fight for you. He will be with you. Let me tell you why some believers are defeated. Little compromise here. Let you hear. Let you hear. Pleasing this one here. Displeasing God. You'll be a victim. The Bible said, Jesus said, my sheep which I protect, they don't follow a stranger's voice. Anytime you tell them anything that does not agree with the will of God, what do they do? 
they will run away. Child of God, you know why? You want to live a triumphant life? Little compromise here. Little kind kind here. Little sacrifice here. Little idol here. The on Sunday is for God's own. I'm telling you, your life will not be secure that way. Listen to me. There are two things that will save you in this world. Ability to say yes when you have to say yes. Ability to say no when you have to say no. Let me tell you what that will lead you to. Some people will hate you. But it doesn't matter who hates you because you said no because God said no. Because you say yes because God said yes. At the end of the day, as the brothers of Joseph came to bow, I see darkness coming to bow before you as well. Yeah. Many believers are defeated because of little compromise here. Little compromise here. Pastor, you know, it doesn't really matter in my tradition. We respect tradition. But as long as the tradition is in conflict with our foundation of faith, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, man. You know one thing I know? Unbelievers will never compromise their doctrines. They will never, am I right? Yes, sir. They will never, it's only believers. Not all believers anyway, Pentecostals or Petirascas. Are we together? They have a way of trying to take the grace of God for what? For granted. He said, my sheep, they hear my voice. When I lead them, they will follow me. When they hear a stranger's voice, they run away. Child of God, till you get to a point where you can run away from things that God hates, you cannot enjoy a triumphant life. Most of the defeat that people suffer, did you compromise here? Did you compromise here? But you know what? When God who is merciful sees your heart, you know at times we protest against God. God, why? No, you are not supposed to say God, why? You know why? All you are supposed to do is say, God, have mercy. And you know what? It will turn your defeat into victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Another wisdom for triumphant living. Call upon the shepherd when in an overwhelming situation. Anytime you are in a situation you can't handle. It's beyond what you can figure out. It's beyond what you can comprehend. Never you fail to say Jesus. We heard the testimony of the woman whose son drank certain mixture of chemicals. He said, all she could do was to say, Jesus, save my son. Jesus, save my son. You know what that means? You are simply saying, save your help me. Save your help me. Can I pray that on behalf of someone? In the name of Jesus, I declare that whatever you may have been in that is so overwhelming, your victory is sure this week in Jesus' name. <laughs> Call upon the shepherd when in an overwhelming situation. The Bible said, Peter stepped out of the boat. But what he saw, he was afraid. And the Bible said he began to sink. So verse Matthew 14, 30 to 31. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink. And then he cried out. He cried out. Child of God, are you going through anything you can handle? Cry to who? To Talk back to me. Cry to who? To what did he cry out? Lord, save me. Immediately, what happened? Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And he said, you have little faith. He said, why did you die? Anytime you call on the name Jesus, whether at the midnight hour, you will not hear network business. Anytime you call on the name of Jesus, he will always be there for you. Amen. He said, as many that call upon that name shall be what? Shall be saved. When you are in a situation, you can't, you, you can't figure it out. You don't know what to do. Your decisions are not accurate. Call upon the name of Jesus. As Peter was sinking, a lady told me, she found herself sinking into the sin of immorality. He said, you know, I practice the art of lesbianism. I'm into all kinds of things, alcohol. And one day she went before Jesus and said, Jesus, I am sinking. I'm dying. Everybody think I am a nice person, but I'm dying slowly. She said to me, Pastor, when I prayed that prayer, I went to bed. He said, I was amazed. When I hear the story of Jesus visiting individuals, I have not always believed it. But in my own experience, Jesus came, woke me up, and sat by my side. And I said, I love you. I will help you. She said, all the urge and all the desires and all the things, the motion to keep doing those things died. Our friends came to our house the next day. And immediately they stepped into our room. They knew that something has happened to her. And one of them said, what happened to you? She told them, Jesus. Come on, shout Jesus. Jesus! What is sinking you? What habit is sinking you? What lifestyle is sinking you? What company is sinking you? What friendship is sinking you? You need to cry out. 
I am tired of this life, no rest. Outwardly, people are appreciating me, but inwardly, I'm dying. Cry out. Peter cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand. Child of God, there's no need living a false life. There's no need trying to use makeup to cover up things. There is one person you can cry to, and when you cry to him, he will not tell you, I'm too busy. When Peter cried out to him, the Bible says immediately, Jesus said, I'm here to save you. Lift up your right hand. Someone here, you will enjoy the saving power of Jesus. Another wisdom for a life of victory or a triumphant life. Be confident of victory because of the presence, power, and the help of the shepherd. Be confident of victory. It doesn't matter what is going on in this world. Can I tell you this? And I'm not boasting. I'm telling you this by the grace of God. I'm not afraid of my future. I know my future is blessed. Come on. I know my future is blessed. I know my son is blessed. I know my daughter is blessed. I know that myself and my wife with our gray hair will see our grandchildren. Amen. In fact, we are anxiously waiting. For those of you who are grandparents already, you don't know. Please be praying for me. Are you still there? I envy you. I want to see my grandchildren. I have no doubt at all. I will carry my grandchildren. I have no doubt at all. Even though there is no much hair on my head, this hair will still be white. Are you still there? I have no doubt at all. Are you still there? I know that my son and my wife will see that and our grandchildren will be playing around us in a compound. All of us will be running. You know, one of the ways you will stay young is to play like a child in your old age. Some of you, the reason why you are very old is that they call you papa, 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 and you are not doing like this. Are you still there? Sometimes you need to straighten up and behave like a young person. Are you still there? I have no doubt at all. I am confident that it doesn't matter who betrays me. It doesn't matter who backstabs me. It doesn't matter who cheats me. It doesn't matter whatever anybody does to me. They did all of that to Jesus. But the Bible says, on the third day came out from the grave. Lift up your right. You are coming out of that situation. Yeah. Don't forget, I preached a message some time ago, shame. And someone asked me, where did you get it from? I got it from my own experience. Sometimes you go through shameful process. Sometimes people mock you. Sometimes some things don't work out well. Sometimes people will betray you. Sometimes business will fail. Sometimes certain things will not work out. Sometimes people will say, where is your God? But be confident of one thing. Because of the presence, the power, and the help of your shepherd, Jesus, your victory is guaranteed. Yeah. Shout it that amen one more time. Yeah. Psalm 27, 2 to 3. It said, when evil men advance against me, will you read with me, this with me loud and clear? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, what happened? When my enemies and my foes attack me, what happened? Shout amen to that. Verse number three. Do an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Do war break against me, break out against me, evil then will I be confident. Why will I be confident? Because I know my Redeemer living. Yes. You will live a triumphant life. Yes. Five, be thankful and joyful to God always. Let me repeat this loud and clear. That seems like a big thing to say. Can you say it very well? Yes. Say it one more time. Yes. Shout it. Yes. Imagine someone visiting you, expecting you to cry. And they see you dancing. Say why? Say because Jesus said, in the midst of my sufferings, in the midst of my trials, what did he say? He said you will have peace. Be filled with joy. If I should say, be cheerful. Be cheerful. Sometimes, I don't know how some of us think. Maybe you think that if I excuse my face, I'm very angry, God will understand. If God sees the way outside I am, he will move. God is not moved by our faces. He's moved by what? Our faith. Some persons, when they are coming to church or they are in church, you don't need anybody to tell you. You know they need a husband. Are you still there? You know they need help. You know they need money. No. Anytime people can see your situation or your face, your faith has been tampered with. Child of God, in the midst of the situation, be full of what? Say it loud. You know why some of you are not going to say it, Pastor? It's not easy. If it is not easy, God will not say it. Let me show you. Can I show you? Yes, sir. Let me repeat this. Be joyful and thankful to God always. Say that. John 16, 33, King James Version. Lift up your two words. I just feel like prophesying over someone. I just feel like praying. From today, God will strengthen you in the midst of your storm. Amen. God will be your strength in the midst of your storm. Amen. Let me prophesy this over someone. In the name of Jesus, those who saw your shame will also see your glory. Amen. 
John 16, 33. He said, these things have I spoken unto you. That in me, ye might have peace. In the world, ye shall have. How many? Shall have tribulation. But what? But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Look at him and say, rejoice. rejoice. Because your victory is sure. Tell him and say, rejoice. rejoice. Because your victory, because your victory is, settled is settled by Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse number 16. This is in the Bible. If it's not in your Bible, then that is not a Bible. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse number 16. Shout it. Everyone who is part of this service, shout it. Shout it. They lied against you. Shout it. Admission didn't come. Shout it. Your husband didn't give you money for your hair. Shout it. They didn't give you money for market. Shout it. Your tailor disappointed you. Is dropping now. The Allah didn't come as one expected. Your husband didn't come home last night. Your wife didn't give you food. You invited to the bed, he chose to sleep in the parlor. Man said, No, I won't rejoice. <laughs> rejoice how many times? How many times? Look at the number whether they are rejoicing. Doing great. I called someone recently and I said, Hello. Say hello. Hello. I said, Hello. Am I talking to this social person? I say, Pastor, yes. I said, What is happening? Pastor, and because now you're called, I know they pick people call. <laughs> what is your problem? Someone called you. You know, you go to the show, say hello. Say hello. Pastor, how are you? So I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. I'm great. Child of God, you are not pretending. You are exercising your faith. Yes. Say hello. Say hello. Hello. At times I call someone, say hello. Say hello. You wear? You wear so? Say I wear. Talk out. Be full of life. Be full of what? Sit down there, just sit down. Sit down, chose a Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jump up and shout hallelujah. Shout out the say rejoice. Choir is singing, dancing, shouting. You are there flipping through your phone. Rejoice always. When you come home, rejoice always. My children used to tell me this. And I thank God, God is helping me. They said, Daddy has changed. I didn't know I have a problem. And I said, how? They said, Daddy, when you used to come home, everybody, if they were happy before, everybody would frown. Because the lion of the tribe of Judah has just appeared. <laughs> the anointed man of God, warrior, has appeared. You are anointed, should not be your excusing of faith. Where there is anointed, there is joy. <laughs> there is what? When they said it, I was touched. So I've been a, 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 a terror. You come home, everybody's running for cover. That is not God. That is not God. Someone shout, I choose to rejoice always. I choose to rejoice always. First 5, verse number 18 said this. Can you shout it with me? Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you. Cry to you. Jesus a situation as once as someone dying, say, Father, thank you. No enough food, Father, thank you. And we saw how the situation turned around. If you are going to live a triumphant life, you need to apply the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God may not seem like a, like a serious thing, but that is where your victory is. God bless you. Jump to your feet at this instant. Jump to your feet and say, My victory is sure. My sure. Whether you are 150 years, jump to your feet and say, My victory is sure. My is sure. Lift up your two hands. May the Lord be with you. In a world of so much trouble, in a world of so much betrayal, in a world of ups and downs, 
I declare that God will grant you victory. God will be your helper. In a world where you go to bed, you wake up the next morning, it's like the whole world is falling apart. May the Lord be your strength. In a world where someone calls you a brother today and tomorrow, he says, I hate you. In a world where some say they are friends and the next day they become your worst enemy. May the Lord be your helper. In a world of so much today and tomorrow is like nothing to depend on. May God be your Jehovah Jireh. In a world of so much head challenge, pandemic, prostate cancer, diabetes, hypertension, and what have you, I declare in the name of him that is above every disease and sickness that your healing is established in Jesus' name. In a world where children look at their parents and dishonor them and call them names and bring sorrow to their heart, may God cause your children to bring joy to your heart. In a world where marriages are falling apart every day, may your marriage be an example. An example of marriage blessed by God. In a world where people are afraid of their old age, may the word of God that says, even in your old age, God said that we care for you. May you enjoy divine care. May you enjoy divine providence. Karosha, but may you enjoy divine strength. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you receive grace to rejoice in the midst of tribulation. And may your testimony be next in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray. You are blessed. I say 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 you and your children are blessed. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord be with you. 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 May the Lord be with you.